Hi everyone, I'm Karina. Hi, I'm Emma. And welcome to the Artists and You podcast presented by Moksha Canada. It is a podcast for this time to give artists a platform to showcase their talents. And you can find us on all social medias under Moksha Canada. Today for the podcast, we have a very special guest. He's very talented. His name is Noah. So Noah, please introduce yourself to the audience. Hi guys, my name is Noah Casa. I'm a 17 year old uh, jazz singer from Bonn, Ontario. Um, I absolutely love singing. Absolutely love everything that has to do with music. And I'm very happy to be on here today with you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming. So why don't you start off by telling us how you got involved in music and how you became a jazz singer? So growing up, I was more into rap and more pop stuff. Um, then one day I was uh, in my in the car with my grandfather. He showed me all the all the greats like uh, Bobby Darin, Frank Sinatra, um, all the all the Rat Pack, everyone, and I just fell in love with it. The sound, the harmonies, the music, everything about it was just beautiful to me, and it would open up a whole new world. And to this day, I still thank my grandfather for getting me into this music. Nice. Um, who would you say your biggest inspiration was? And I guess you can answer music-wise and then not music-wise. <laughs> so my biggest inspiration music-wise would be Sinatra. Um, I feel like I model my music off of him. All my phrasing, all my sound, I try to basically emulate what he does. And I feel like if I can get half the way there, then I feel like I succeeded with myself. Um, Non-music wise though, my main uh, inspiration would be my mother. She has been very persistent, uh, very helpful for me. And she helped me really break out into this music and was really supportive of me when really no one really cares about jazz music. She was always there and really tried to help me continue on with this. And to this day, I appreciate everything that she's done for me. Awesome, I love that answer, such a great answer. Um, Cause like, yeah, obviously we have inspirations in the music industry who, or like maybe not the music industry, but just like celebrities, people we don't actually know. But then when you have that like close relationship with your mom or a parent, sibling, whatever, it's just, it's completely different and it's really nice and wholesome. So yeah, I love that answer, it's great. Thank you. Um, what have you been up to during the pandemic time? Um, so mainly during the pandemic, I felt like I was really lost. Um, I tried keeping up with my music, but ultimately I really lost my passion. Um, and mainly during the pandemic, I just focused on my studies, um, working at school, trying to become the best scholar that I can potentially become. Um, I really lost my touch with music. I didn't sing for the first three months. I took a complete break never really did anything about it. Um, and then as things started to open back up, I really started getting back into it, started getting my groove back, started working much more on this stuff. And now we're here today. We did the live city together, which was really fun. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. I was just gonna say before Emma, you jump in, did you wanna talk about the live city competition? Yeah. Um, that was that was a really great competition, by the way. You guys were amazing, obviously. Me too. Um, and I'm thankful that I was able to win, ultimately. And I really enjoyed working with all the guys, Peter, um, Bernie. Uh, they were all such amazing people to meet and get to know. And they, re I'm really looking forward to working with them after this, like Paul, Carla, and all them, they they are really great people, and I'm really excited to see what's going to come. Yeah, you did really good, and that that was yeah. I think that was a winning performance. It was really Thank good. You. Um. So, oh yeah, I was gonna say like that's true. Like it's it's fine to take a break sometimes from music or stuff, but it's also like you lose motivation and stuff too. And I get that. I feel like everyone has had like a bit of that. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, I don't want to say the pandemic, the pandemic's not over, but what are you looking like, 
um, things are starting to open, but when, like, everything's, like, back to, like, fully normal, which will probably still be another year, what are you looking most forward to? Definitely going out there and performing again. Um, it has been so long since I did a performance for live people. Um, I have been keeping up doing performances for retirement homes, but other than that, I really haven't been to, like, any bars to perform any uh, solo, really good performances with a big band and stuff like that and i really miss that so i'm really excited to get back into that that's really the one thing i was missing over all the pandemic yeah everyone feels that way yeah it's it's really different like just even knowing like in girl power we we um used to do like performances every weekend which is starting again but um for the past like year it's been like really really empty it's like it's crazy but yeah, everyone's looking forward to going back to performing and seeing people and everything. <laughs> of course. I remember before the pandemic performing for ja for the Jazz Festival, performing for Mel Asman Square. The giant crowds that, I, that we used to have were absolutely insane. And since then, we really haven't gotten anywhere near that. And I completely get where you're coming from. Um, but I guess you could see this as a way to restart a way to rebuild yourself, you know? Um, you're getting completely new fans or fans that you've seen before. So ultimately you wanna show them that you've improved and show them that you can do other stuff, you're versatile and you worked on that during the time that we had off. Um, I feel like the time, that also the time that we had off during the pandemic was a great way to work on yourself, to work on the type of music, different types of music and Ultimately, sorry, I'm saying ultimately way too much, but um, it was a great way to show how much you can actually improve and untap your potential. So going out there and performing for the same people and new people is really what I'm looking forward to and mm -hmm. what everyone should be looking forward to as a performer. Yeah, exactly. Like Emma and I, we did a performance last weekend and then we have one coming up this weekend and just oh, wow. getting back in, yeah, get, like with Girl Power and getting back into the swing of things just feels so good. And yeah, we miss it a lot because um, we did online shows like Girl Power. Uh, actually, we actually did this like by local concert series called Star Power, which is run by like our management. Mm. And like, it's fun. It's like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm super glad that we did it, but it's not at all the same thing. Yeah. So I'm glad that everything is kind of opening up and hopefully, hopefully things stay open and it doesn't go like- Oh yeah, like, a for like the fourth wave that's coming. I know, but, yeah, I'm hearing, I'm hearing some people say we're already technically in the fourth wave. Yeah, we're already technically in it, but I don't, yeah. I, I personally believe that it's, it's a bit overhyped. That's just me because a lot of people are getting more vaccinated now. It's not going to take as much of a toll, but. but still, there's so many people who aren't, and it's like, oh my gosh, like, I feel like it's never going to end. It sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to be like this till 2023 at this point. I agree, yeah. <laughs> um, but now that I know you live in Vaughn, because I don't think I actually knew that, um, I don't know if this is too far for you, but Main Street Unionville actually looks for performers regularly if you were in Really? Oh, May yeah. oh, I was just there. Yeah, you um, told like me, the, right? Like you went strip, to the... Right? Yeah, Il, the Il Postino. Il, Il Postino, Il Postino, yeah. <laughs> Great food. Oh, my God. I had the... Uh, I had the... Uh, penne, or not the... Rigatoni alla vodka. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Insane. Italian food, yes. And what's it called? The day that I went, there was a jazz festival there. I didn't even know. It was the TD. They brought it back, the TD Jazz Fest. It was only like two performers, but wasn't uh, so it's still great to see that people are performing outside again and stuff. You know. Sorry, Emma. What did you say? Oh, there was someone on our podcast who was in that, weren't they? One year. Who was it? Uh oh, Isabella. I think. Wasn't she in that? Was it? Maybe. I know. Like, um, my dad performs on Main Street Unionville a lot. So, um, yeah, I don't know. He might he might do it again. And then, Noah, if you want to come on out, that'd be cool. I'd be happy to. And Karina and hey. I too. <laughs> yeah, like, because I, I performed with my dad just, like, as a guest. Like, I did a couple songs. Oh. But then I was like, I was like, I should get Emma to come to Mainstream Unit, but we just make a day out of it. We do a duet or something. Yeah, be and fun. then if, if, Noah, if Noah wants to pull up, we do a trio or something. Yeah. That'd be fun, yeah. <laughs> for sure. For it'd be sure. really fun.
Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just take a little bit of a break and show one of Noah's amazing videos now. My name is Noah Costa. I'm 17 years old, and I'm very happy to be back here performing for you guys. It's been a long time. For once in my life, I have someone who needs me, someone I've needed so long. For once unafraid, I can go where life leads me And somehow I know I'll be strong For once I can touch where my heart used to dream of Long before I knew Someone warm like you Who'd make my dreams come true for once in my life, I won't let sorrow hurt me, not like it's hurt me before. For once I have someone I know won't desert me, I'm not alone anymore. For once I can say this is mine, you can't take it. As long as I know I have love, I can make it. For once in my life, I have someone who needs me. Say this is mine, you can't take it As long as I know I have love, I can make it For once in my life I have someone yeah, For once in my life I have someone For once in my life I have someone who needs me Well, you were mentioning some performances. What are like the, what are those performances you were talking about? Something else? So, what's it called? Before the pandemic there, I was part of a big band, uh, the Metro Big Band. Um, it's actually run by Bernie. Yeah, I've seen oh. the videos. I was looking on your Instagram once and I saw, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's run by Bernie and this guy, Rick Levine. Um, we used to perform a lot. We used to practice uh, once a week. Um, it was really fun. I absolutely enjoyed it. It was my first big band experience, like working with that many people. Um, and we used to do a lot of performances before the pandemic hit. Um, we did this bar called the Duke. We were main guys there. Um, and when summer hit, we do these two festivals. We do, uh, Sunday serenades at uh, Mel Lastman square. It's, uh, four bands perform every year, uh, for the start of summer to get people into it. Um, and that was a really fun experience. We had people dancing. It was like a mosh pit of people dancing, but like not as chaotic as a rock band, you know? So it was just a bunch of lovely old couples just dancing in the uh, crowd. It was beautiful to watch. That's cool. Um, I want to know how you, um, got into that. Like, did you know someone or did you apply for something or? Uh, with the big band? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. On my, on my live city audition, actually, Bernie was the main guy there. Like he was the MC there. Not like he was like the, uh, he was like the Sean Byfield there at, at yeah. my audition. Yeah. So when I went in, it was him, uh, it was him and the, and three of the big band guys. I didn't know them coming in. And when I performed, they absolutely, they, I performed Luck Be a Lady. They absolutely loved it. And after the show, uh, my mom, my mom, or Bernie goes up to my mom and he hands her his card. And my mom being the person she is, she thinks she's asking for, he's asking for her number. 
<laughs> like trying to pick her up at the bar, you know. <laughs> so he, she, so she's like, no, 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 go away, go away. I'm married. <laughs> right? so, and then uh, and he's like, no, no, no. I'm asking him to join my big band, and that's how I got into it. Well, so this was an audition for Live City. Yes. Like the first live audition at that. The first restaurant. one, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember that place. Yeah. Uh, I think it, like it was a bunch of different places, though, wasn't it? Or did he go to La Vie and Rose as well? Well, the very first place was like a restaurant bar type place, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember what it's called, but yeah, it was there. Yeah, it was like it was on a it was like downtown near like midtown downtown. Yeah. <laughs> or it was uh, uh, that performance was really good, and I actually have a very weird like, I was I was sleeping on the bar before that performance. <laughs> I was literally sleeping. I, I just came off of school. I uh, I was wearing just a sweatpants and sweat and sweatshirt, mm -hmm. and I get I am basically forced on stage at that point because it was like nine other performers ahead of me, and I get on stage from the performance of my life, get down and go back to bed on the uh, on the bar. Sounds like me. Like I, yeah, I think it was like a weekday and I got off school and then I went and performed, then got home, went to bed. <laughs> like those things are always so tiring and they're always so far from me. They're like an right. hour. Right, the Hamilton. Right. <laughs> but, what, but what's it called? I still am thankful that I got the chance to do Live City. Yeah, it's worth it. Those and... are really good opportunities and stuff. Oh yeah, really good opportunity. It was a really fun experience. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that it was a great experience for you. Um, both Emma and I really enjoyed your performance. Uh, Thank you. I enjoyed, I enjoyed you guys' performance, too. Emma did an amazing performance with, uh, with the, uh, uh, what's it called again, the Michael Jackson song. Yeah, Jackson 5. <laughs> yeah, the Jackson 5 song. It was absolutely unbelievable. It was so good, I had to write it down to, for, one of the, for one of the songs I have to learn. <laughs> yeah. you, I, know, I love that out. one, Emma. I think that yeah, that's my favorite you. song that you do. I'm pretty sure it's my favorite that you do. Other than the originals, I like your originals, but I think cover that's like my favorite one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love the girl power performances. They're always they're always very fun to watch because I love the choreography that you guys do, and it's very inspiring for um, young girls to be watching this, and really, say you guys sending out a message with your music. And Thank you. <laughs> I know that one of my mom's friends, actually, her daughter is uh, is actually in like a girl power and training. I'm very sure. Oh, who? I don't know her name, but I know that it's uh, like she she's having like you guys are having like a recital soon or something for them. Training program. Yeah, yeah, you're running them, right, Emma? You're running them, right? Uh, well, I'm not run like me and Karina teach the trainees, Karina mm -hmm. Moore teaches them um so it's it's kind of like first joining girl power you're not a part of girl power yet but it's kind of it's a training program and then yeah if you're practiced up and stuff and you're ready you have experience performing and stuff then i guess you'll be in girl power <laughs> <laughs> yeah they have online recitals and then once they're like ready they'll join emma and i and then the other pink jacket girls is what it's called for like actual mm. live performances yeah, you guys have a lot of performers. Yeah, well, like, it's it's all like up and down. Some people. I know you have like the main five, like you, yeah. Karina. Um, there's actually this one girl that my friend is like, like that's near me, right? Cindy. Yeah, I think so. yeah, Cindy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, there's two others, like the little girl. Well, yeah, the she, ones she's, that you saw, you she's saw, absolutely hilarious. Yeah, you saw Glee, you saw Glee, and yeah. then you saw Ashika. I think I saw Glee twice. I think she was at the, the Nathan Phillips Square one as well, right? No. Really? No, okay. she wasn't there. No, she she actually no. she joined relatively like recently. Wow, okay. Yeah, like she's still in the training program, right? I Sorry? Think, yeah. She's still in she's still in the training program, but oh, yeah, okay. we, but yeah, we thought she was really good for that performance, so yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, just to change topics, kind of, but not really, a little bit, let's just like switch things back to you, Noah. What are your words of advice or encouragement for people who look up to you and want to do what you're doing? Maybe not necessarily um, like singing jazz specifically, but just getting into mm -hmm. the music industry. No matter what, stick to yourself. 
no matter what your friends tell you, no matter how much people are trying to bring you down, don't listen to them. If you really love what you want to do, like if you really love the music that you're doing, do not let people bring you down. Try to stick to it as much as possible. Otherwise, you're trying to be someone that you're not. And really, no one's going to want you if you if you're doing something you don't want to do. Um, like in my case, all my friends know me as Sinatra. They, they all, every time I go to school, the first thing that my friends sing, they, they come up to me and they say, fly me. And it's a, it annoys the hell out of me. But I mean, in a way it's, it helps me out a lot because it shows that people, it, it either shows that like you could take it to heart thinking that they're making fun of you or it shows that they that you, they think you're actually a good enough singer to be called Sinatra. It's, it's an honor for me to be nicknamed Sinatra at some, at some point, you know? But I feel like the most important thing is that you should always stick to yourself, no matter what your friends do, no matter what your friends tell you. And if your friends don't like the stuff that you're doing, push them aside. They don't yeah, need Yeah, exactly, like you. exactly. Or, I, I relate to that too, because like pe people, um, will like joke around and be like, oh my gosh, Ariana, because like that's like yeah. my similar style and like my yeah. tone kind of like is similar to the stuff that she does. But like also like I'm my own person too. So like instead of taking that as a criticism, like how you're saying where it's like, oh, people don't see me for who I am. It's like, no, people see me as someone who can, you know, be similar to this person who's so great and so amazing but also like i'm my own person and so it's like thank you for yeah. that but then i'm going to continue to develop myself and work on myself as an artist as well of course like i i personally believe it's an honor to be compared to to a legend in sinatra but ultimately it hurts you really, you really sound i like really want to be my own i want to be noah costa i don't want to be sinatra yeah yeah that that makes sense like you like, yeah, like what Karina was saying, like, I get it. People compare her to Ariana and stuff, but um, you're still, like, you're still Noah, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but you really do sound like him when you sing his songs, which is which is really cool, because you could be, like, an impersonator or something. That would be cool, because mm -hmm. I think that's something my dad said. Like, he noticed right away you were, like, you sounded a lot like him. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I think now would be a good time to show Noah's second amazing video, so let's do that. Now you say you're lonely. You cry the whole night through. Well, you can cry me a river. Cry me a river.
Okay, now we're gonna play this or that. It's our traditional game. So, do you prefer horror movies or comedy movies? Comedy movies for sure. I would rather watch Jim Carrey over over The Quiet Place any day. Um, as much as I love watching it with friends, <laughs> I watch as much as much as I love watching horror movies with friends because that's that's like comedy to me anyhow. Um, <laughs> I would much rather watch Jim Carrey, um, what's his name, Ryan Reynolds, any any day of the week. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree. I really, I like horror movies a lot, but um, I don't know, I like what Kareem always says about how it's, a, it's positive energy compared to horror movies that are like negative. I guess that's like really true. I don't know, I hear you say that all the time, and I'm, now that I think about it, it's like, it's kind of true, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I love Adam Sandler. He's so funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, Adam Sandler is my fave. Like, honestly, he's so iconic. Like, I like all the funny guys, like Owen Wilson, Ben Stiller, you know, Jim Carrey, too, and he's Canadian. All right. Wait, yeah, Jim, Jim Carrey's Canadian, right? Yeah. Yes, so Canadian star. So, yeah, I'm going to say comedies. I feel like in the past, like, maybe a couple years ago, I would have said horror movies, but now, I don't know, I get anxious so much easier, or way, way more easily. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Anyways, yeah, <laughs> I, get, I get anxious, like, easily, is what I'm trying to say. And so I feel like when I watch the, like, scary type of movies, especially ones with gore and stuff like that, I feel weird after. Like, I feel those negative vibes. So I'd rather just be laughing with my family and friends watching a comedy, like, something lighthearted, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll ask the second one. Um, okay, I'm actually curious about this one with Noah. I don't know why, but salty or sweet? That's really hard, but... Ooh. Salty. Um, absolutely. Like, I mean, I don't know how I'm going to explain this, but... Like, I if I'm going snacks, I'm easily going sweet or salty over sweet. I'm not going to... I, like, because especially with them with friends, I'd rather chips over chocolate. Yeah, Any day. I agree. I agree. Um, I like both a lot. Like my grandma, she just got me a bunch of chocolate for my birthday. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I think I prefer salty. Like, cause I love like popcorn and chips. And, yeah. Oh yeah, I feel like I have a popcorn addiction. I'm not addiction. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, honestly, like, it, it really does depend on the day for me, I think. Like, my sweet, um, I guess, like, intake is usually Starbucks, because I go to Starbucks all the time. But mm. other, th other than that, it's usually salty foods that I'm craving, like, um, yeah, like, chips, popcorn. Um, sometimes, I don't know why, but I think of, like, fish and chips as, like, a really go-to meal for me at restaurants and things like that. So, yeah, I, I'll, I'll say salty, but today specifically is like a sweet day for me because the pumpkin, mm. spice, pumpkin spice lattes are back at starbucks right. and i'm gonna go get one right after this and right I'm you want to know something what you, you know they don't remove the pumpkin spice right like apparently like from my friend works at starbucks uh from what you told me apparently it's always on the menu <laughs> really yeah oh wow like they just okay. they just advertise it during this time of the year because because fall is coming up you know yeah interesting all i hear is advertisements about new pumpkin spice i mean i like some flavored things but not others like i don't know it just depends on what it is i guess <laughs> mm -hmm. oh yeah that makes sense like some people have their preference of drinks like my if personally if i'm going to starbucks i'm getting a frappuccino easy as that yeah um okay do you prefer um Online shopping or shopping in a store? Online shopping. Because, really, um, I really don't like wasting my time going into stores. Um, I'd rather just do it in the comfort of my own house. Know what I'm getting because I, I know my size already. There's no point of trying on clothes if I know what size I am. And I would much rather spend, spend the time looking online and paying from there because it's much easier than waiting in lines, um, look, looking for what you're trying to get. And if it's out of stock in, on the store and online, what are you going to do? 
You, yeah. you wasted your time going there for something that you wanted rather than knowing that you can get it right away on your computer. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, I, I think I like online shopping better. It's like, I, I used to like, I like going to the mall, but like, I I haven't been in so long. It's like when I think about it, it's been like so long. Like I'm not one of those people who goes often. And my mm -hmm. grandma's like, oh, want to go to the mall for my birthday? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I haven't been to the mall in so long. But yeah, I personally like um, Shein. Me and Karina both buy. Oh, uh, Shein, right? Is yeah. That I, I don't yeah. know how to pronounce it. There's so many different ways you could <laughs> say it. Yeah, but, Shein, Shein. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think that's really good. I know guys shop there too. They have really. Yeah, yeah, they have lots of cool stuff um, there. But anyways, what I like about there is that they don't have an in-person store, and they have, their prices are amazing, and they just have so much stuff. Like, Karina's right. store, she bought, like, so much stuff for only a certain amount of money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think this week I'll go with online shopping, because I think previous episodes I've said in-person shopping. But this week I found some iconic items online that I have not seen in person. So I really, I just have to say online. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, stay, stay tuned to the gram to see the fits. <laughs> yeah, you're like a fashion icon on the, on the gram, man. Oh, thank you. It means so much. Thank you. <laughs> like every day um, I see you with a completely new fit. Yeah. yeah, no, I have to like, I have to withhold my, um, what would you even call it? Like my fashion. Stalker. Oh yeah. I, cause I have like, I have a highlighted story on Instagram called fits. So I mm -hmm. gotta, I gotta keep, what's the word? My reputation. Like I have to right. wear my reputation. <laughs> yeah. But, but sometimes I'm just at home in sweatpants too, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Um, anyways, but I'm just wondering, do you like pop music better or R&B music? R&B. All the way. All the way. What? I call R&B modern jazz. That, what R&B artists do you like? Tyler the Creator, Rex Orange County, um, uh, Kali Uchis. Um, all of them are just amazing. Um, Bruno Mars is starting to get really into R&B disco type stuff. Bruno Absolutely Mars. love him. Loved him even in his pop days. Yeah. Um, Bruno Mars is so good. Like, he can oh, do... Yeah. So much you can do anything, yeah, so literally anything. anything. And that song, Leave the Door Open, like that song was stuck in my no. head. Like, I don't no. know how, it's my favorite song ever. Like, Kate, I love it. Skate is incredible as well. Like, <laughs> as bad as the lyrics are, the music is incredible. <laughs> like, see, like, you look at the lyrics, you're like, how is this a good song? Then you hear the, then you hear the music and it's, mm, no, it's so all catchy. the way. I love that song, but yeah, I think I prefer R&B too. I listen to like, um... Her and Bryson. Mm, yeah, her is amazing. Daniel Caesar. Yeah. No. Uh, Jacob Collier, my my boy. Absolutely love him. Yeah. So yeah, I'll say R&B. Yeah. Usually this is pretty hard for me. I think I typically say pop just because I sing more pop, like with girl mm -hmm. power and everything. Of course. And because because Ariana is my favorite singer and she's known as a pop singer. But actually, she does a lot of like pop R&B fusion, and and I do that too. And so like. Ah, uh, I just like I can't really choose both. Honestly, I choose, I choose pop just because I like I do sing it more often and because I hear it on the radio all the time. Yeah. But like, okay, the fusion of pop and R and B is just like chef's kiss. Like it's perfect. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, what's it called? The, I'll just put it this way for my preference. Pop music I find is very repetitive. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm basically hearing the same song over and over again if I'm yeah. listening to pop music. With R and B, there's a lot of different stuff you can do. It's the most creative field of music. I believe right now and I absolutely love it for its creativity for the innovation that it's bringing to the music community and all in all it's just such an amazing like there's such amazing singers um so like so amazing yeah and I love if it. I if I if I do not want to do jazz anymore R&B is the way to go for me <laughs> if that yeah. ever happens Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. All right, well, do you want to ask any more, or...? I was just kind of wondering, before we finish up, do you have a favorite song at the moment? Not really. I mean, I just listen to a lot of different music, you know? Like, a lot of different songs. Uh, I have a, like, 
I just have my few favorite artists, listen to them mostly. Like I, li I listen to Call Me When You Get Lost a lot lately. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Sinatra's uh, Count Basie albums. Um, and that's where I go. I, I, really, I always tell people I don't have a favorite song. I have a favorite singer. I have favorite singers. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. That, that's um, fair. That's I, fair. Yeah. And I guess I ask my, I'll ask my traditional question. We always ask. Um, okay. So if you could invite three people to dinner, living, dead, fictional, or real, who would they be? So if I were to invite three people to dinner, obviously it would be the Rat Pack, the original three. Uh, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis, and Dean Martin. Those guys knew how to party. They were the most fam they were the most famous people on the earth at one point. Everyone knew who they were. They would step it. They would just walk into casinos all the time, and everyone would know who they are. They would just step on stage, like freelancing. The this would be a hobby for them at this point. They would go on stage, sing a couple songs, get back down, and drink. And I feel like that would be the big the big three that I would love to chill with, no matter what. I love that. That's a great answer. And you guys would have a very interesting uh, conversation over dinner for sure. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder what the content of that conversation would be. It'd probably be very cool, and very fun, very live. Oh, very fun, yeah. yeah. Like, they're um, all focused. The... Yeah, so yeah. It would be like, it would be very fun for me to see how that would be like, you know? I actually yeah, actually experience what that would be like. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, okay, so we will finish up now. So Noah, can you please just say all of your social media handles so that everyone watching can follow you? All right, so my main my main social media handle is at it's Noah Costa on Instagram. Um, I do have a TikTok, but I am going to be starting up uh, starting up a new TikTok from Only Music. Um, that'll be also under the name it's Noah Costa. And yeah, that's basically it. Okay, okay, cool. So, so yeah, everyone go and follow Noah. Um, he posts some great content and you got to see a little bit of some sneak peeks of the performance videos that we will, um, that we showed previously. So if you want to see more of that, definitely hit up his socials. I'll say my Instagram is at Karina.B, C-A-R-I-N-A-A.B. My tie-dye shop on Instagram is at to die for shop, the number four. My Facebook and YouTube is just my name, Karina Bianchini, and my TikTok is Karina Bianchini XO. And my Instagram is Emerald B Music, and my YouTube, Facebook, and music on all streaming platforms is under Emerald B. Perfect. Yes. So everyone also go follow Emma. Of course, you know, follow me and follow Noah. And subscribe to Moksha Canada's YouTube channel down below. Don't forget to like and comment. And so, yeah, thank you so much, Noah, for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Well, Pastor, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be my last school song of the night. It's a very popular Frank Sinatra tune. We had some issues in the recording booth while recording this. So far as that when you exit left, they call them back to do it. And the girls are gonna be accompanying you today. Thank you. That's life! Oh
I'm gonna roll myself up in a big ball. Is it morning? Cry!